I hear and I read a lot about the unconscious. Sometimes it's called the subconscious. I'll call it the unsubconscious. I'm forever bumping into the unsubconscious. For an insubstantial entity, it sure gets around. It is in the work of psychologists and psychiatrists and just plain psychos. Therapists make much of the unsubconscious. They are always tapping into it, drilling down, and hoping to hit a gusher. Creative people just about worship and adore the unsubconscious. They are always paying homage to it, and if not homage, then at least lip service. What is the unsubconscious? Literally, I think it must be what we know, even though we don't know that we know it. So it's a very peculiar, specific brand of knowledge. It is a world of shadows aching to become material. It is a great deep cistern full of cool thoughts waiting to refresh us. It is like passengers on a subway going nowhere in particular until all of a sudden a destination for one of them, the lucky bastard, suddenly pops up. It's ghosts in a spirit world. It's a cavern where the phantom of the opera might abide, or the attic where the crazy uncle is kept. It's a stew of sperm and eggs which never mated, and so exist half-formed until a miracle occurs, and subtly but firmly con conjoined, they appear as a full-fledged chick of an idea, peeping with pleasure. The unsubconscious reservoir of gypsy mentality is the modern avatar, the pseudo-scientific equivalent of the muse. The muse was more congenial and personable, I think. The unsubconscious, while as reliable as the muse, which is to say rather quirky, capricious, and unpredictable, is more mysterious, unapproachable, and a little forbidding. The muse could almost be seduced into compliance. There is no such contact with the unsubconscious, and yet those who believe in it feel a close connection, almost like a twin from whom they were separated at birth. Like the muse, the unsubconscious is a magnificent enabler, though it cannot be summoned at will, like a common house pet, and therefore is not exactly man's best friend, but is more cat-like, the unsubconscious, if courted assiduously, could be counted on to provide a panoply of treats, unexpected associations, flights of fancy, sweet dreams, terrifying nightmares, entire worlds and kingdoms, the absolutely perfect and precise word, a shocking contrast, a character destined to be embraced by millions. Unfortunately for me, I don't believe in the unsubconscious. I don't think the mind has a room for things it knows and knows that it knows, and another room for things that it knows but doesn't know that it knows them. Further, that there is some passage between the two rooms, a trap door or a secret compartment or a porous membrane, so that some of the things in the purgatory of the unsubconscious can graduate, as it were, into the conscious room, blooming from dark seed into the full flower of thought. The unsubconscious must be a great source of comfort and a bulwark to creative people who are often venturing into the unknown and would therefore gladly welcome help that comes from their own personal storehouse of the unknown, their unsubconscious mind. For them, the unsubconscious would be a guide, a GPS, and a backup, a generator that kicks in when the main power goes out. I can't help it. I think the unsubconscious is hooey. It would be nice to have one, but I think it's wishful thinking. I'm also pretty sure that a nice dose of wishful thinking would be helpful to an artist who is stuck on a piece of work. Any thinking, at that point, wishful or otherwise, could be helpful. If they want to think that the boost comes from the unsubconscious, that's okay with me. If it comes, you can call it anything you like. I do believe in the imagination which is not a room in the mind, but a power of thought, creator of the odd and the unusual, sort of like the brain running without a clutch. It's not engaged, it's not doing any work, it's spinning, 
but it's only seemingly idle. Free of its usual tasks, it acts like a dynamo, producing the marvelous gifting source of energy and grace. Or I could compare it to a waterfall on the stream of consciousness. The British poet and artist William Blake, considered a lunatic during his lifetime, thought the imagination was the richest expression of what it meant to be human. Clearly, bereft of an unsubconscious, and maybe a little bit of a lunatic myself, I am twice grateful for my imagination.